Hi, and welcome to Love is Crafting. Love is Crafting. I'm Tila. And I'm Stanton. And if you're new to our channel, thanks for checking us out. And if you're returning, thanks for the support. What we do on this channel is we take you through crafting and DIY projects that are real, but not necessarily perfect because love, love isn't, isn't perfect. perfect. We have a goal to reach a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, but we need your help. Would you consider subscribing to the channel? We post new videos every Saturday. And in today's video, we will tell you how I had a major freak out when our sublimation printer was printing this, when it should have been printing this. As a lot of you have seen our previous videos, we converted our Epson EcoTank printer into a sublimation printer. That comes with some risks. Yes, anytime you use a product differently than the manufacturer intended, you're on your own to fix it. And since we voided our warranty, that's what we did and we'll show you how. Show your support for the channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing. Love is crafting. Love is crafting. Okay, I had a project that I needed to do and of course I waited to the last minute. This is what the project was supposed to look like. But when I printed it out, it looked like this. And oh my God, I freaked out. I almost started crying. I was like, oh my gosh, Stanton, what am I gonna do? I need this done and I only have two days to get it done. I heard the emotion in her voice and I decided let's just start with troubleshooting. First thing we did was go to the Epson printer and arrow over until we found the maintenance section of the menu. Select OK and then do a nozzle check. When doing your nozzle check, you want to make sure you load regular printer paper into your printer. Do not waste your sublimation paper on a nozzle check. Here are the results from our nozzle check. We did it a few different times just to make sure we were getting the same results. As you can see, the yellow was not printing at all. So while I'm still in freak out mode, we go back to the maintenance section and we decide to go ahead and run a head cleaning. The good thing about Epson is the maintenance menu is set up in the order that you should troubleshoot. First, we did the nozzle check. Number two is head cleaning. Again, remember to always have regular paper in your printer. You don't wanna waste your sublimation paper. As you can see, this process does take a little bit of time, so have some patience. Here are the results after our head cleaning, and as you can tell, the yellow still isn't showing. That just means we go to the next step. Step three is a power cleaning. Next, Epson's going to advise you that you may need to run this process a few different times and even wait up to 12 hours for the best results. Once you've read all the warnings, just press OK to proceed to the next step. What power cleaning does is it removes the ink from all the lines. Since all the ink is going to be drained from the lines, you want to make sure that you have enough ink. Doing this process without enough ink is going to damage the printer. You need to make sure that you have at least 30% of ink in the reservoir. And as you can see right here, we do. Once you confirm that you have enough ink to complete the power cleaning, you can start the process. It says that the print quality issues should be resolved within 12 hours, but we didn't wait that long and the issues were resolved. Because the lines are going to be completely drained and this takes up so much ink, um, the system requires you to hold down the start button for five seconds to make sure this is what you actually wanna do and it's not an accident. Once the power cleaning is complete, it will do another nozzle check and print out another test page. I have never been so happy in my life to see the color yellow. Once your power cleaning is complete, you want to make sure that your maintenance reservoir isn't overflowing. To do this, locate the compartment on the back of the machine and unscrew it with the Phillips head screwdriver. The cover of the maintenance section just slides to the back and you will see the maintenance reservoir. To remove the reservoir, use that Phillips head and unscrew it and then slide it out. The maintenance reservoir is filled with sponges so you don't have to worry about ink splashing everywhere. Just make sure that it's not overflowing. Once you confirm it's not overflowing, go ahead and reinstall it. Once the power cleaning is complete, and your printer is printing out all the colors it should, 
Next, you'll have to do an alignment check. Go back to the maintenance setting in your menu options and select print head alignment. There are two, vertical and horizontal. Start off with the vertical. Remember, use regular paper, not your sublimation paper. For the vertical alignment, you will be given a group of boxes and you would just pick the clearest box in each row. These boxes will have little lines on it. Just look for the box with the least amount of lines. After you do the vertical alignment, you need to do the horizontal alignment. It will put out a page with some sections of boxes. You need to go ahead and select the boxes that are closest together without overlapping. Since this took a chunk out of our remaining ink, we just needed to refill the reservoir. We decided to only refill the black since that's the one that was really low. We kept the original Epson ink bottles, but filled it with sublimation ink to make refilling the ink easier. To refill the ink, flip open the tap on the reservoir, take off the cap on your ink, and just pour it right in. Once we refill the ink, we needed to tell Epson how much ink was left in the reservoir by manually entering it. Crisis averted and problem solved. Sometimes the print head just gets clogged. Thanks for watching, and remember, love is crafting.